Welcome to the Technology and Energy Panel Talk. We're talking to experts from the heating industry again today. Our topic today is networked heating and building technology. We'll discuss what advantages this has for the user and how the individual devices in the building actually communicate with one another. The title of today's program is EEBUS, the language of energetic networking. I would like to start by welcoming Anike Abromait to the studio today. She comes to us from the EEBUS initiative. And I'd also like to welcome Dieter Kehren, head of the Forum Smart Heating in the BDH and head of the Department Energy Management Systems, or EMS for short. Welcome. Mrs. Abromait. The first question for you. The BDH and the EEBUS initiative have already been cooperating for several years. What issues are you concerned with there? First of all, the EEBUS initiative is a non-profit association that defines and establishes communication interfaces for energy management on behalf of industry. This means that practical, energy-relevant use cases are specified and then transferred into standards. The initiative has now over 60 members from a wide range of sectors. Among them are leading companies and associations in the automotive industry, HVAC, solar, white goods, smart meters, as well as grid operators and energy suppliers. All of them come together and define this standard. The EEBUS standard emerges from this initiative and is also named EEBUS. It is an open communication standard that provides networking in a building. This means that all energy-related devices and components must coordinate their energy flows with each other, and this is precisely what this EEBUS standard ensures. It can be seen as a language for energy management, so to speak. And this lays the foundation for energy networking from the grid to the property. Mr. Kieren, why is this important for the BDH? This is really interesting for us because in recent years we've seen more and more heating systems being networked with other products such as photovoltaic systems, battery storage units or electric cars. And that brings us to the question, do the devices understand each other? Can they get along with one another? Are they interoperable? And that's exactly where EEBUS comes in. EEBUS describes itself as the language of energetic networking. And that's a good expression because it shows the necessity for the different network products to all speak the same language. Mrs. Abromait, you mentioned the use cases developed by EEBUS. How does EEBUS go about this? How are such use cases developed? First of all, the initiative collects all the input from the various sectors. Then subject-specific working groups get together and develop the so-called use cases based on this input. They define them and then translate these use cases into specifications. These specifications are in turn transferred to the relevant standardization bodies. The participation of major associations such as the VDA, the German Automotive Industry Association and the BDH provides the initiative with important practice-oriented input which in turn contributes to the quality of the standard. Mr. Kehren, the BDH has set itself the task of formulating the industry requirements for energy networking. How does this process work? We see it as our job to work out, formulate and represent, on the one hand, what are the energy networking requirements of our industry, and on the other hand, what are the opportunities, framework conditions and perhaps also the limits of energy networking. And of course we are happy to take on the task of working this out, which is why we founded the new Department Energy Management Systems last year. This is one of the agenda items. Formulate technology openly. What are our needs, challenges and possibilities in energy networking? And we also want to make that generally available to all networking technologies that want to use it. And EEBUS is of course a very, very important contact for us. After all, we've been cooperating for a very long time and that is advantageous for both sides. We can operate with the certainty that our view of energetic interconnectedness will be used. 
And eBus has the advantage that what is implemented in use cases is actually the industry view. Which use cases already exist with regard to digital heating and which will be next? In terms of digital heating, there are already many published or standardized use cases that, for example, enable the output of heating and air conditioning devices, such as a heat pump, to be queried and temporarily limited so that the heat pump can be operated in a tariff-optimized manner. Or in the context of self-generation, so that consumption can be increased or optimized, for example, using photovoltaic systems. In addition, the EEBUS initiative has also promoted the standardization of grid-friendly use cases and has already published the first of those as well. For example, communication can be implemented via the smart meter gateway, which is required by law, and power signals can be received from the grid operator at the grid connection and then implemented on the property. Use cases are currently being developed that can implement tariff-optimized operation, exchange tariff signals or price signals, and be implemented by the energy management system on the property. Mr. Kehren, why are the use cases important with regard to the energy revolution? And what is the BDH doing to support the expansion of these use cases? Use cases such as those just described are enormously important for the energy revolution. On the one hand, we are currently seeing the interplay between the electrification of transport and that of heat generation. On the other hand, electricity generation is becoming more volatile as it is fed from renewable sources. And in this mixed situation, there is a risk of bottlenecks, both in generation and in the transfer of electricity through the power grids. And with use cases like these, based on energy networking, you can develop intelligent methods that make it possible to get this under control. All without expanding the grid or generation plants, which could be enormously expensive and time-consuming. Precisely for this reason, use cases are so important for the energy revolution. So, how do we proceed? What are the next steps? Well, I don't think the technical methodology is the sticking point. I believe that the technical methods we need are already available in a lot of cases. But we still lack some standards and a regulatory framework. Ultimately, the framework is important in order to give product manufacturers and consumers and investors the certainty that they are backing the right horse. And standards are equally important for advancing these issues in the market. At the moment, we are working on a DKE application rule, for example, which describes and regulates energy networking based on EE bus in buildings at the grid connection point. And that's exactly the direction in which we need to continue in order to advance these issues in the spirit of the energy transformation. So it's a very dynamic field with a lot of movement in it at the moment. Thank you both. That was today's program on the topic of networked heating and building technology. You can also find more information on this topic on the EEBUS initiative site at www.eebus.org. Thanks again to today's guests and I wish you an exciting ISH Digital 2021.